Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to send pseudo authentication commands to your Apple Watch when you're working on the terminal. Let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. Gonna jump to this other TMAX session and I'm going to run a pseudo command here. Pseudo who am I, for example. And notice that I get this pop up on the screen. Approve with Apple Watch or enter your password to allow this. And I show you my watch real quick. Hope that you can see it. You can see, you can see the message right there. I'm just going to double click here to approve. And as you were able to tell on my terminal, it authenticated me without entering my password. So I'm authenticated right now. If I run the same command again, I'm still a pseudo. I don't know how long you have to wait for it to ask you your password again. But if you want to run tests, you can run this sudo dash K command that is going to clear the pseudo credentials. And if I run the same command again, it's going to ask me to approve this. And I can do it here in my watch. As you can see, I just double tap that button and it took it as my password. Notice that I don't have a keyboard with Touch ID and I also don't have a computer with Touch ID. I'm using a Mac mini computer. So if that's the case for you, you can follow this guide. So you're going to be able to set this up too. This is the guide that I'm going to be following, the one that is shown here on the screen. I already went through the introduction, but let me see if there's any other relevant information here. This is the keyboard that I'm using right now. And uh, there's just an example here of what we just saw. By the time this video is up, you will be able to find this guide online. So this is the way that it's going to look like. So you can follow all of the commands shown in this guide. So you can just copy and paste. So this is what I'm going to be following. I'm just going to follow it here in my text editor of choice, which is NeoVim. because I just find it easier to navigate there. And I just like it better. So let me go to the next section here, which is the disclaimer. Okay, so follow this guide at your own risk. You are responsible for anything that happens. Follow this if you trust the repos that we're going to use. And I'm not responsible for any authentication problems with sudo you may have or any other issues that may arise. So make sure you understand what you're doing before you make any of these changes. Your sudo authentication could break. It did for me when I was testing, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what are the requirements as we see here? Remember that this is for Mac OS. You do need an Apple Watch minus an 8 series. I have haven't tested other Apple Watches. I have an M1 Mac Mini running Sequoia. I don't know if Intel based Macs work or if older OS versions work. I haven't tested, but you can test as well at your own risk. Remember that you do not need a keyboard or Mac with Touch ID. A link to this guide is going to be in my video description. If you like this video and if you want to support me, you can share a tip here. And also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I also left the link here. I'm going to add that as well in the video description. So let's set everything up then. Before you continue, you need to make sure that this option is enabled in your system settings. This Apple Watch toggle has to be on under Touch ID and Password. So that is the first step. Make sure that that is enabled. And once you have that, if you have a computer or if you have a keyboard with Touch ID, you need to follow this section. Here are the sources. Here are some articles that you can go and read if you want to find out more. Remember that this is only going to work with a keyboard or computer with Touch ID. And if it's a laptop, it doesn't have to be in clamshell mode, I think. But even if that is the case, keep reading or keep watching the video because I'm going to show you how to do it even without Touch ID. Now, this section that we're in right now works only if you're outside of Tmux. If you're a Tmux user, first, you need to install this PAM reattach. Notice that I'm using Tmux. You can see that on the top left corner, that green bar that says GitHub-NFS. That is Tmux. That's a tool that I use all the the time. If you want to learn more about the terminal tools that I use every day, you can go and check this video out. Command line tools. I mention basically all of the tools that I use on a daily basis, Tmux included. I have some Tmux related videos as well. You can check those out too. Okay, so if you're a Tmux user, make sure that you install this PAM reattach first with Brew. And after we install that, we need to create this sudo dash local file and it needs to have these two lines, PAM reattach and PAM dash TID.SO. This file that you see here, PAM dash TID.SO, is something provided by macOS directly. So you're not adding something strange here. The only thing that we'll be adding is this PAM reattach. If you want to understand what the command that we're going to run below does, you can read more about that in this section here. This part of the section here, remember to run it only if you're a Tmux user, because this is going to add both lines. Okay, so Tmux users, first, make sure that you do have this file installed. Okay, after you installed it with brew, run this command, and you should see this. Notice that it found the file here. So that means you're good, at least on this side. So make sure that that file exists. If the file is there, then this is the command that we're going to run that is going to add the two lines that we need. I'm just going to copy this, selected it, just going to copy it. I'm just going to go back to this other session. I'm just going to paste it here and hit enter. Since I already have this configured, it's just going to ask me to authenticate. I'm just going to accept this. 
and the file was modified. So if I cat this file, oh, I'm not in the right directory. I need to change to this dash etsy dash pam.d directory, and I'm going to cat the file. Notice that it has the two lines that we mentioned, which are the two lines that we need. You're a tmax user, okay? If you're not a tmax user, do not run this command, but instead run this other command. This is just going to remove the file first, if you already have it created or something, and then it's going to remove the comment on this line, okay? So if you run this other command, you will have a single line, which is the one shown here. Here. you're not going to have this line okay so that's what that command does here you can see the way that the file looks like we already saw this notice that this other pseudo file is the one that reads the contents of the pseudo dash local file so if we come back here and i run here cat pseudo you're gonna see that this is the pseudo file and it reads this pseudo dash local okay so let's go back here what else do we have here in case you want to test remember about the pseudo dash k command to invalidate the cached credentials okay so we already tried that let's move on if you have a computer or keyboard with touch id this should be it this should already be working for you and sending the authentication notifications to your apple watch if your computer is in clamshell mode or if your computer or keyboard don't have touch id we need to do this other section we need to add this other file which is pam watch id i'm just gonna fold my headings right now and i'm just going to unfold this pam watch id we have two options to install this we can do it with a script that is the first step here or we can do it manually i'm going to do it the script way because it's faster we could say and i'll let you know how to do it Okay, so let's do this installation with the script. Here is the repo. Let me go there real quick. If you find this useful, make sure to start it. I think it's a great tool, a great addition, and it helps a lot. So make sure to give it a star. The maintainer was kind enough to open issues or to enable issues on this repo. So if we go to the issues tab, you're going to see that there's only one issue because I was having this error. That person fixed it. So thank you very much. And I had a couple issues, you know, a couple questions, and now it is working just great, at least for me. So if you have problems with this repo, if you get any sort of errors, you can come here and open an issue. Just be patient and uh, that person will help whenever they have some time, I assume. Hopefully the repo is going to continue to be maintained. We'll see. Well, let's go back to the guide. The repo has a script, which is the one you see here. It clones it, runs the make file, and then cleans up. It's going to add some extra lines that we're going to clean up right now. Okay, so I'm just going to run this. Keep in mind that I already ran the other section before, the other command for tmux users. So if you're a tmux user, make sure that you run that first as well and that you have pam reattached installed as well. I'm just going to paste this here. Just going to hit enter. This is going to clone the repo get the files that it needs, add them to where they need to be added, and modify the sudo dash local file. It's asking me for my password. I'm just going to pause the video while I type it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I already typed my password. As you can see here, it added this file, and then it modified the sudo dash local file. That's the part that you can see here. If we go to that file, if we cat it, you're going to see that it has some things different right now. Notice that it has a few extra lines that were added by this script. So I'm just going to clean it up. It's going to run sudo vim sudo dash local. Remember to open vim as sudo. And uh, I need this line, which is the pam reattach, because I am a tmux user. You also need to leave this. Do not modify this line, but make sure that you remove these two, these three lines, I'm sorry. So notice that I have the three things that I need. This is to send the authentication to my watch. This is Apple's configuration file, and this is for tmux. So I'm just gonna hit colon here, WQ to write and quit. That saves the file. If I cat the file right now, you're gonna notice that I have the three lines. Notice that it doesn't matter that you have spaces here in between. I have a space here. I have like five, six spaces here. Doesn't matter. It still works. So remember that it had asked for my password here. In this section above here, it asked me for the password because we had modified the file before that. We only had these two lines, pam reattach and pam-tid.so. At the beginning of the video, I had the three lines. That's why the watch configuration was working. But if you have only these two lines, it's not going to work. So that's why. So now if you run a sudo command, let's give it a try. Just going to run sudo dash k first to invalidate the cache. Now I'm going to run sudo who am I? Notice that I get the notification in my watch. I'm going to approve this. And it works just the way that we expected. Now let's go back to the other tmux session. I just press shift for that. That's the way that I configured it. There's just something that I want to show you real quick. I'm going to press it on my keyboard, hyper C N. I get this fuzzy finder menu and I have some color scheme that I can choose from. I'm going to choose this dark pitching that is H. Let me hit enter here and you're going to notice that a lot of things are going to happen. The colors are going to change in a lot of different places. At the very top, notice that you can see different colors in sketchy bar, which is the menu bar that I use in macOS. If you want to find out more about sketchy bar, how to set it up and everything, you 
you can watch this video, install and configure a custom menu bar. I go over everything in detail there. You're going to notice as well that my Tmux colors changed. You can see different colors here on my Tmux menu bar. I'm going to quit NeoVim right now. You're going to notice as well that my Starship colors changed. Also, my Ghosty colors changed. Those are the colors of my terminal emulator. And if I reopen NeoVim right now, which is what I was working on, you're going to see that it has a different set of colors. So I was able to modify the colors everywhere in my system by using this tool. This is a tool that I created. It's just a series of bash scripts. And if you want to find out more and how to set it up and all that, and I go over everything in detail in this video. So go and check it out if you want to find out more. Okay, so this was the installation with the script. We already did this. We edited the file. We cleaned it up. This is the way that it has to look. If you don't want to run that script, but if instead you want to run the installation manually, you can follow this other section. Here are the commands just to clone the repo, cd into that directory, and run this make install. This is the output of the sudo make install command. This is what you should get. You don't have to get any errors at all. Here is the file that is copied. If you list it, you won't be able to find that file the way that is shown here. Notice that the file is there. Then once you have installed that, you can add it to your sudo dash local file. So this is the way that the file is going to look in the end. So as you were able to tell, after doing all this without using a magic keyboard, I can get authentication notifications in my Apple Watch from my Mac Mini. Let me just quit out of here and I'm going to change my color scheme again. Just going to press hyper C N and I'm going to change it to this Lenkarsu color status H. It's going to reopen NeoVim and I'm just going to restore the session and I'm back in my colors. If you're having issues installing Pam Watch ID, remember to open an issue in the repo. Here is a link and just be patient. And I would assume that the maintainer will try to help. It was very responsive and helpful, at least in my specific case. So just be patient. What happens if you mess up something and you cannot run sudo commands anymore? It happened to me during the testing phase because I was using an old repo no longer maintained so basically pseudo commands didn't work anymore but this is something that you can fix the only thing that you need to do is to start your macbook or your mac computer in safe mode in my case since it's an apple silicon based mac turn it off leave the power button pressed until you see something on the screen you select your hard drive i think it is then you open the disk utility tool and mount your data partition this is very important it may be mounted already it may be not but just make sure that you mount it once you have mounted that Quit the disk utility and then go to utilities and then to terminal that is going to open your terminal. You're going to have sudo writes there. So all you need to do is to navigate to this directory. This is your data drive and this is the etsy-pam.d directory that we were working in here. Okay, this is where our files live. This is where the sudo dash local file is. So just navigate there, open the file with BIM, edit it, save it, restart the computer, and you should be good to go. If you're using a work computer, it may have a firmware password, so you will not be able to do this. I'm not sure what your course of action will be there, maybe contact in IT, but this is not something that I would recommend you follow in your work computer to avoid any sort of issues. What do you think about this solution? I would like to read your comments down below. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this worked for you. I'll try to help as much as possible but remember there are no guarantees and you're responsible for following this guide so that's it for today hope this was useful i'll see you in the next video